Hi everyone, my name is Debbie Manville and I run the One Million Diamonds Art Instagram. Today I'm talking with Marina Capos. Hi Marina. Hi. Nice to see gonna... you. <laughs> nice to see you too. Today she's going to tell us a little bit about um, her progress, her process, and um, her art as it has transformed over the years. She's been painting for a while. Um, did you go to school, Marina? Yes. Um, I, so I decided pretty early that I wanted to be a painter or an artist, really, when I was 16 years old. So I transferred um, from a regular public high school that I had, and I went to the LA County High School for the Arts. Um, and so I got pretty intensive art training, like very young. I went to the San Francisco Art Institute for a year, um, and then I transferred to uh, Cal Arts, um, the California Institute of the Arts, um, and I got my BFA there. Um, and then I got an MFA at Yale in oh, painting. Wow. Yeah. So I, I did it pretty straight through. I didn't take a break. So it was a pretty intensive art education. All right. Wow. And then you, you started in painting? Yeah. I mean, I, yes, I was mostly painting. I think in high school, I didn't, I obviously was kind of experimenting with a lot of things at that young age. And I, and when I was really young, I think I didn't understand that you could be an artist and have a career, you know, so I, I always wanted to be a, a graphic designer, or, you know, like, so I, I took a lot of those kind of like design classes in high school. And it was only uh, when I was a senior um, in high school where I took my first painting class. Um, and I, I just loved it. Like I fell in love with it. I got to kind of understand like paint more painterly uh, in the early years and it kind of took me a minute to just realize that I could combine this kind of graphic quality that I always liked um, and 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 combine it with my painting practice so that kind of happened like in undergrad where I started kind of painting very flat and, and minimal okay and you have um, some of your early work you wanted to show us yeah, I thought that I would just start uh, by sort of giving you like kind of an arc of where I was at, like after I got out of Yale. And, um, I'd love to see it. Wow. So, uh, so I graduated from Yale in, in uh, 1997, um, and I'm from Los Angeles, and I, I came back to LA um, that summer and sort of didn't really know quite like, what do I do now? You know, like, how do I start to, uh, how do I show painting? How do I get a studio? You know, like kind of the basic step of just getting out of school. Um, and I ran into a high school teacher who uh, told me about um, an architect that had an office at Bergamont Station, which was kind of an art complex in Santa Monica that had a lot of galleries in it and his offices were there. And um, my teacher told me to go and talk to him because he was interested in contemporary art. So I went over there and, and he was super generous. And uh, I told him that I make, liked making large scale painting installations. And he said, great, like pick a wall in my studio and make a painting. And as you can see, I was very ambitious and I picked the largest wall that was in the office this, which was I think it's about 18 feet high and 48 feet long oh my gosh and I spent that summer after I graduated making this and it's on wood panels because I, I wanted to figure out a way where I could take like if I wanted to take it away at some point um, that it could be taken off the wall so it's kind of like gridded onto wood panels and I I rented scaffolding from a company that summer and kind of made this thing on, on the wall. And it was sort of meant to, I'm always interested in transforming spaces and um, kind of uh, having the viewer have like an experience in front of the painting, almost like setting a stage. Um, and so uh, that was kind of the idea. And then because this was originally a train station and we were in LA, I sort of, um, uh, 
wanted it to look kind of like a moving landscape, you know, sort of, I had spent my childhood um, uh, driving in cars and kind of watching the landscape flash by. So that was kind of the original intention of this was to sort of like see a flashing lights, see a moving road, you know, and kind of get that idea of, of landscape like kind of in movement. I love it. I think you really did a great job with that too, because my eye moves around the piece constantly as I'm looking at it and it's, a, it's got major graphic quality to it. Yeah, I mean, that, that's something that is, has really stayed through, like true through all of my um, way of making images was this kind of flat and graphic quality. And I often wonder about that, like where did that come from? And sometimes I think, um, that's a product of growing up in LA and there's this kind of stark light here, you know, kind of crisp shadows. And it also has kind of a, a minimalist like Japanese quality to it, um, which is interesting to me because I've been to Japan eight times now and oh, wow. um, exhibitions there and really have like a connection, you know, so I find that kind of interesting. Um, and, and I also have an identical twin sister um, who uh, makes jewelry and she also uh, has this same kind of aesthetic like she makes very kind of graphic clean modern kind of flat colored uh, designs with her jewelry so we really share this aesthetic you know and so it's kind of um, it's definitely embedded yes it's embedded yeah so so I made this piece and um, a friend of mine in New York uh, knew a gallery dealer in New York um, that had a gallery called I-20 um, that was in Chelsea for many years. Um, and he was coming to LA and she mentioned to him that um, I had been making this large scale painting in Santa Monica. And so he was like, when, she's, when I'm in LA, I'll come and see it. So he came and saw it and he offered me my first solo show in New York. Nice. So I moved to LA after I made this painting and I moved to New York and this kind of kicked off. I'm not going to show the, that um, show here, but this is kind of a good example of kind of the, the trajectory of what I started making over kind of over the next uh, 10 years, like a decade of kind of making these large scale uh, painting installations that um, really referenced like the space, the gallery space, I would measure the walls so that I could make the paintings the, the exact length of the walls. Uh, they measured the architecture, they, they uh, um, reflected the city that they were in. There were a lot of, I mean, I'm finding, I think kind of one of the themes of this talk is just how I sort of started uh, making paintings by looking outward, you know, and kind of trying to find my inspiration out in the world, you know, so a lot mm -hmm. of it was kind of landscape architecture, um, uh, kind of just looking at what I was seeing and kind of interpreting it, you know, and I think like over the course of my painting process, I kind of like the more current work, I think is much more um, inward and more psychological and kind of more sort of ingrained in me as, as opposed to looking outside. But this is kind of a good example of, of the kind of work that I was making um, over those years, those early years. And this show was called A Murder of Crows and a murder is the collective noun for a group of crows. Um, and um, this was also the first time that I incorporated uh, uh, figurative elements into the paintings. I, I had been making paintings of, of like a portrait, um, but I always had like a blank background, like a white background. Um, and then I made kind of more landscapey paintings, uh, but they never had figures in it. And the reason why I did that was that I really, again, I really just wanted uh, to create an experience, experience like someone could walk in and and um, sort of feel like almost like they could enter the paintings and like walk into the space. Um, and I felt like if you put a figure in a painting, it sort of like separated you and like pushed you out of the work, you know, and then you were sort of watching that figure in the painting, you know, and so I sort of struggled with how I could incorporate some kind of figurative element. And this was kind of the first time that I kind of embedded 
um, uh, kind of portrait of paintings of me sort of in the landscape. And this was like personal, like a personal show for me because I had shown in New York and in Tokyo and in London. And this was kind of me like coming back to LA, like coming home and kind of really making like a portrait of Los Angeles. Um, okay. And I like this is a good example of something I was also interested in, like sort of bringing the outside in, you know, and I, I love, you know, this kind of like red painted ironwork that was outside and like sort of, you know, uh, echoing those colors inside. And so all of a sudden you sort of would uh, look at like the outside and the inside, like in kind of like a different way uh, than you might have normally. Okay. And this is just a detail of that, like kind of an example of embedding this kind of portrait element into the landscape. I think it flows nicely. Yeah, I mean, at this show, I, I worked on really hard and I feel like it, it came, it was like successful and like it's um, in, in having an experience like in the space and really kind of overtaking the space. Yeah, it's, it must be huge, too. I mean, how long is that piece right there? Uh, I, I think they're four by five feet. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like 20, that's like 24 feet. Wow. Um, wow. So this is kind of moving on to that installation that I just showed you was in 2005. And so this is now 2008. Um, okay. This is actually the same gallery space um, in Los Angeles. And um, this was me kind of experimenting. Uh, I had sort of, you know, uh, worked on kind of reflecting like a cityscape, like within the paintings and wanted to kind of explore a different space. Um, and I listened a lot to NPR when I was in my studio. I, I was listening, this was right before um, the presidential election, the 2008 Obama election. Okay. So I had this idea that I wanted to explore like a, a different kind of space, you know, one um, like a political space. Um, and I'm half Greek, my father was Greek. And so I kind of started there and looked at a lot of Greek vase painting um, because I was interested in how like an artist could depict um, daily life or political life. And I just loved the Greek vase painting sort of represented that like kind of a very simple kind of silhouetted, like clear kind of clean way of telling a story about what was happening like in, in their world, you know? So I kind of, that was like my jumping off point. So you can see I sort of was using these terracotta colors and like oranges and black silhouetted figures. Um, and uh, I went to the DNC, I saw um, Obama get the nomination for the presidency. And so I did a lot of, uh, research on it um, and kind of created, I mean, this installation is interesting to me now because it was such a different time, like politically, you know? Um, and if I was to make a, a painting or an installation now about what's going on in the world, it would be very, very different, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, I can imagine. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, so anyway, this is kind of, I mean, you can see I was like talking about the war in Afghanistan and kind of like sort of two cultures like at odds with each other and fight a fight for resources. And then um, this this panel was sort of the war. This was the war painting. It was based on um, Picasso's Guernica painting in a way. I sort of was painting myself as different characters like. Uh, kind of an Uncle Sam character, a warrior over here. Um, this is the, the war painting. This painting is, is hanging in a collection at Neuhaus um, now. Okay. Um, Great piece. Detail. I, I often used boyfriends as models, so there's a lot of uh, my boyfriends that like appear in these paintings. <laughs> Um, and this kind of, this side was sort of like the endorsement for Obama. Um, and this was also the, uh, and this was 
based on my dad, kind of like a seated Republican character. And this was uh, kind of like a housing market crash painting. Um, and this is an interesting painting. I want you guys to remember this because um, this painting never sold and um, was in storage in my sister's garage. Um, and I never liked it that much, like looking back, I always felt like it was a little bit literal, like too narrative. Like I, I, I always wanted to have a balance in my work with um, telling a story, but also like sort of keeping it abstracted in a way too, you know, like I was sort of holding on to this balance and this got a little bit too illustrative for me. So I didn't ever really like this painting, but um, it was sitting in my, in my sister's garage for, for this whole time um, until just recently. And then I just came to LA um, during the, the quarantining um, and I decided that I wanted to make like a large work. And um, so I decided to use, I reused, I recycled this canvas. So you'll see this later. I mean, I took the, the painting off of it and I restretched it, but I think it's kind of a nice like um, extension of like what was happening in 2008. This show uh, opened a, a week before the market crashed. Um, and I remember my gallery dealer saying like, we're, we're never going to sell a painting like now, you know, like all I can ask you for is a strong show. And she's like, you gave that to me. But um, so it was a very uh, like uh, difficult time and uncertain time. Obviously, we all felt that. Um, and so, so I thought it would be interesting to reuse this canvas and kind of its energy for, you know, sort of the crisis that we're in now, you know, so you'll see this, this format again later. Um, so after that, 2008 was really like a changed kind of the trajectory of my career. Um, whereas all of a sudden there wasn't, for, at least for me, there wasn't um, uh, the money and the funds to be able to do these large scale installations in different cities. Cause I had been going to Japan or London and staying there and like making work and like making an entire installation, like staying for a few months and then like making the installation and, and then leaving. Um, and that sort of those kind of opportunities like dried up. Um, this is a good example of, uh, I think of like sort of how I was feeling um, um, after that time. Cause I sort of felt like, oh, what's going on? Like I felt like I had made it in my career to a certain extent and then all of a sudden like a lot of opportunities dried up and my gallery in LA closed, my gallery in New York ended up closing. Um, so I started making these nudes which are much smaller. Um, this is about, uh, uh, I forget what this is, but it's about like two feet by maybe three feet or something. And, yeah. Um, and I was making these nudes that again were about space for me like I had sort of done the cityscape, I had done like a political space, and then this was kind of like using my body um, as a landscape, you know, and and, um, and you can see the head is kind of like off of the body, and it's sort of, I felt like, I think during this time I felt a little bit unmoored, you know, and like sort of like I was kind of floating without a direction, and I made a lot of, not a lot, but I made like a handful of these paintings during that time, and I feel like they kind of represent that emotion um, and it was also a time um, when my father passed away um, and so I really kind of had a, a, a moment of just reflection of like why am I painting like what is important to me you know and like why am I doing this you know and um, and so I started really thinking about that a lot. I was really interested in pattern and design and I actually went back to school and started taking a lot of um, design classes at FIT in New York. Um, and I started making a bunch of like different patterns and then wanted to figure out how I could incorporate them into my painting. So this is an example of that work. And it also, I mean, I had a story in my head that I'm not sure that you actually see in the painting, um, but it was about 
about kind of life and thinking about like how humans have kind of this history and we have a soul and that we sort of change like throughout our lives. And so the, this paint, these paintings were kind of this experiment to almost like build a history or like even like a soul into the painting. So I just layered these paintings. This is the same, that same painting that you were looking at, but just at different stages. And I just kind of, um, just painted over and over and over again like these different patterns you know on top of each other and the idea was kind of to obliterate like a narrative um and sort of have it almost like be woven together in a way you know and then when you it's very the painting looks very flat and graphic and in, in the slide but um but when you see them in person they're you see all the edges of like the stenciling and you see like kind of, they're really like built up with paint and like very textured, you know? And so that was kind of the idea. There's, a, you can sort of see that a little bit in, in here, but um, that was kind of the idea was to uh, create like a, a history with this painting and sort of like give it like a spark of life. Um, and it's I worked really, a lot. It's got such a cool final image. Thank you. I, I have always, I mean, I, I think these paintings are beautiful. I, I struggle with whether they were successful or not for some reason. And maybe it's because I attached so much emotion to them at that point in time. They're also like the most abstracted paintings that I had made up to that point, which is interesting because my painting always like sort of comes from a narrative, but really what I like is abstract work, you know? And so I sort of feel like I'm kind of slowly moving towards abstraction, but like somehow this narrative is kind of like pulls at me like, you know, and so I can't quite get to like full abstraction yet, you know, but that kind of feels like sometimes like my goal, you know? Okay. So this is like another example of, um, that that painting series. I like that, it because of the repetition. Yeah, I mean, this, this has a lot of, uh, I'm showing this work today because it, it has so much to do with what I'm doing now. Like, I feel like if I hadn't made these paintings, I wouldn't be making the paintings that I'm making now. And okay. I experimented a lot with transparency and, you know, sort of figuring out how I could do this layering process. I um, experimented with repeated images and kind of pattern making you know and I feel like that really shows up in the work now so this is an example of how that painting got made so as you can see it started out like really loose and kind of almost like just poured paint on the canvas and then sort of um, had these kind of different stages till, till the end. I really love the brush strokes in these because they're so varied but they're so deliberate in a way, like because they have to stay the same pattern, but the choices that you made with them, I think are really superb. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it, these were fun to make because there wasn't a lot at stake for me. Like, I think I needed a project uh, where I could keep working and keep moving and experiment with brush strokes and ideas. But because I was, uh, just layering pattern on top, a lot of it would get covered up, you know? And so it was kind of like this sort of fun moment of like, sort of just like, it doesn't matter, you know, like I can do this and then I can just like paint something else on top of it, you know? And so it was kind of freeing in that way. No, totally. It's like play. How long would it generally take you to make one of these? These took a really long time. I mean, I had sort of slowed down in general because I felt you know, I was sort of making this transition in my work, you know, of like what I wanted to paint, you know. So one of these would take me like a year to make. Um, oh, but wow. I take, sometimes I would put it aside, you know, and not work on it for a while. And I made three of them. I'm, I'm only showing you two today, but there's okay. three. They're great. I really like it. Um, detail. But that. The, even in the, just the shapes, I see your style. Yeah, I think that, that my style, the way I make paintings always really comes through, like, you know, it feels like. Are your stencils hand cut or do you do digital? I hand cut everything on the, I mean, I, I kind of feel like I'm a surgeon um, where I'm just putting masking tape on the surface of the painting and then I'm cutting with an X-Acto blade. Um, just onto the surface through the tape and, and rolling. I often roll paint with paint rollers to get that like textured effect. 
Oh, okay. And in this work, I was really playing with um, sort of doing many, many layers of the stencil so that you'd get like a really sharp edge of what was underneath. So you could really see like what was happening like underneath it too. It's definitely got a diaphanous feel to it with the shapes. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Um, so that kind of brings us to, to my current work now, um, which I think after I learned a lot from making those pattern paintings. Um, and so I kind of wanted to get back to, to using the figure in a way, but like kind of abstracting it and, um, and, and using kind of this patterned idea and, um, and, and using these transparent layers, you know? So I started experimenting with that. And the, these were kind of some of the first ones. These are much smaller. These are about eight by eight inches. Um, so this was kind of like the first time uh, that I kind of started uh, working this way and, and kind of like just playing around with like the feeling of repetition. And I liked kind of how the shapes kind of buzzed and almost had like an energy to them, you know? And so that was kind of like what I was after. I decided these are the larger versions of those. Um, this is just a studio shot because I haven't shown them yet. Um, and, uh, and I, I've been really excited about like this new project because I feel like they, they, they feel to me like uh, experiential, like just within the canvas, you know, but it does, it's not like a giant installation, you know, and so like I, I sort of like that energy that's kind of running through it and, and how they're kind of optically buzzing, like they almost feel like sound, like they're making a sound, you know, even though they're just a static image, you know, and so, um, they have quite the resonance, which is perfect. Uh, yeah. now, let me ask you, this is oil on canvas? No, this is acrylic on canvas. Great. Um, I never use oil. I'm, I'm kind of like an impatient painter and, and stenciling a lot, so I just need it to like dry quickly. So I've always been uh, um, an acrylic painter. In the same way. Yeah, these are just so great. I mean, the shapes, the repetition, the colors, it's yeah, got such an amazing feeling to it. Yeah, something that I've noticed, I think there's like some kind of transference quality that happened in these paintings that I've noticed that since COVID, I started making these right before COVID, okay. but now um, it feels like uh, people have really responded to them during this time, you know, so I sort of feel like they're, they're abstract enough where people can sort of sort of project like their own emotion, you know, on top of these images. And so a lot of people see anxiety, isolation, like kind of what's happening now. Some people see hope, you know, like everyone sort of has like different emotions that they're kind of placing onto the work, you know, which I think is really exciting, you know, and I feel like they're uh, really resonating with people now, you know, so I, I think that's kind of interesting and um and I like the idea that these are all they're all referencing like a, a female figure you know but um in a really abstract sense yeah these are great so I want to make a lot a lot more of these I have I'm hoping that I'll have a show next year um and I'd love to have like 20 or even 30 and sort of place them in a grid because I think they really speak to each other and I've always been interested in how paintings interact with each other like when they're hung together mm -hmm. so um so that's kind of my idea right now I only have um seven of these but I'd like to sort of continue the series and make more this one is um is a hand and the hand is actually what makes this kind of basket like it's just a hand repeated over and over again that kind of like ends up making it look like a vessel yeah i just love it i love the shapes and i just love the the repetition and just the energy behind it 
Yeah, someone came to my studio too and mentioned the color palette and was like, oh, it's like a 1980s like makeup palette, you know, and I like sort of liked that idea too. I was like, yeah, maybe. But I kind of see 1940s, but that's me. I see that too. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, that's always what I'm looking for is to sort of is minimize, minimize, minimize like the way that I'm making an image so that like it sort of gets down to this sort of like clean um, simplicity somehow, you know, where people can bring their own ideas to the work. I mean, I'm telling a lot of stories in my head, you know, as I'm making them, but it isn't necessarily something that like, I, I like it when other people sort of uh, bring their own stuff. I love the color on this new one. So you sent me this in the mail and this is hanging where right now? This is in a gallery called Foyer LA. It's actually an artist project space. Um, okay. Artist, her studio is back here and she built out the front of the space uh, to be a gallery. And um, her name's Connie Walsh and she is curating some really great projects in the space. Like the space has been open about a year, I think. Um, okay. And doing some great projects and so she curated me here with a, a film by Maya Darren okay. um, and and then this is the this is the painting that I was pointing out earlier that was kind of the housing market crash like 2008 painting that I restretched and put new canvas on wow and that thing is huge yeah it's 10 feet long it's six by ten okay um, and I I came to to LA to quarantine and with my sister and we she she graciously let me clear out a room in her house and um, we took all the furniture out and I just made it into a studio and we brought this giant thing into her house it didn't even it didn't even fit on the floor because of the crown molding on the floor but if you I raised it up with some paint cans and it like fit the wall exactly like if it was up a little bit higher um, and so I painted on it since I think I started in early June and I just finished it like about two weeks ago. Wow. Um, uh, I love it. <laughs> I'm so really great. pleased with it. It like, it, I felt like I really got like the transparency layers going. And I mean, this was a very labor intensive painting because this is kind of like the one image. It's sort of like two faces like repeated. But I, um, but then I, I sort of started on the left and went and just repeated that, that one image like over and over again. So each one of these represents like a painted, there's 10 of them. So I basically painted this, this image here 10 times, like across the space, across the, um, the canvas. Wow. So, so all of that painted stuff is underneath here, but a lot, obviously like the, the only thing that actually was seen was these just like little slips of, of the underpaint of the under images, you know. But when you see it in person, you can see a lot of that texture and stuff is still there. Mm -hmm. So I'm really pleased. I also am really pleased by uh, how it fit because I already had this canvas. It's not like I, I measured it for the space, you know. But I, I just love how it like really sort of integrated in the space and even the way the ceiling is like, you know, the kind of lines here, the ceiling sort of really match like what's happening in the painting, you know, so and then also even the lamps kind of look like the That's the funny. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> the space, so I was super happy about it. Wow. It's just, oh, it's just too good. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of like um, my last latest project. Um, Let me tell you, you've, you've come a long way, baby. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is great. Oh, I could look at this for about a hundred years. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. I mean, it's just got so much going on, but it's, but it's like so simple, but it's so clean. So it's nice. How yeah. long did you paint this? I started in June, so June, July, August, September. So it was like three and a half months, really, that uh, I worked in it. And I, it probably would have taken me a lot more time, but because it was in my house where I was living, I was able to 
really kick up like my production time. I, you know, I could paint at 11 p.m. at night. I could paint in the morning. I could keep doing layers like over the course of the day, you know? So I feel like that really, that was kind of an interesting experience for me because I realized that all my commuting to my studio in New York and um, all that was just sucking up so much time. And I realized like, oh my God, if I had my painting just like close to me, I'd just be so much faster, you know? So that's kind of what happened here. Like, I feel like it was a very labor intensive project, but it, I did it like fairly quickly. Yeah, no, totally. I, there is a big difference between having a studio in your house and then having to go somewhere. Yeah, because I, I live in Queens and my studio is in Bushwick. Oh, wow. um, and so it's about like an hour commute. I used to live in Brooklyn, so it was more convenient, but then I moved. And so uh, my commute is quite long, you know, and so I kind of like go there. I do a layer or two on the painting and then I leave to wait for it to dry and come back the next day, you know, but I'm realizing like here I was able to do like three or four layers a day, you know, and so, um, so yeah. It changes so, the way you think. Yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah. Well, thank you for showing this all to us. Um, I just, I just think it's so beautiful. Thank you, thank you. What do you do? You have any other plan? You're going to work on these probably for another. What would you say? You did seven, so you're going to do another thirteen of these. Yeah, I'm hoping. You know, I'm about to go to an artist residence um, called Lighthouse Works. That's a, a lighthouse um, on Fisher's Island, which is off off of. It's in New York, but off the coast of Connecticut. Um, Sweet. And so in November and December, I'll be there. Um, and so I, I'd like to maybe make four, if I could make like four of those smaller paintings while I'm there, that would be really great. So um, I'd love to just finish up the year. Even though this year has been really hard, I feel like production wise for me, it's been really good, you know? So um, I just like to, finish out the year really strong and like make try to make some more work um, before the year ends. Good idea. I mean, it's it's going really well for you. Yes, yes. I think I mean there's always a silver lining, I guess. I feel like the world is falling apart right now, but um but my paintings are still going strong. So <laughs> cheers. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much for talking with me today. I appreciate it, and I, I'm so happy to see the progression of your work. Yeah, thanks so much for asking me. So cheers. Bye.